to the look, printed by the same printers. I look, and it's there again. What was thrown out, they put it back again. How come? How come? What games are you people playing? Look at this. Back again. This is the 1971 version. Back again. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You read the preface. The learned man, the preacher, he reads the preface, but he won't tell his congregation what he's reading in the preface. In the preface we are told that individuals and two church denominations, they stampeded them, they forced them that they should put it back. If not, they're going to preach against this book to say, look, don't buy this, buy the King James Version. Don't buy this, buy the King James, the most up-to-date Bible going to the most ancient manuscripts. No, 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 don't touch that. This is the safer one because it has everything that you want to preach to catch the fish. It's easier to catch the fish with this than with this, the bait. You know, the fish, you know, uses, like Dale Carnegie, he tells us in his book, how to speak. Uh, he says, how to win friends and inf influence people. He says, I like strawberry and cream. I think most Americans do. But he says, when I go fishing, I put a worm, worm to catch the fish. It's not that I love worms, but this is what the fish loves. So I put worm. So now, if you want to catch fish, you've got to use the right bait. Ascension is now restored to the text, says the preface. Why not God told them so? God doesn't speak freely to those scholars as freely as he happens to speak as brother claims with him. You know, again and again you read, God comes to him, speaks to him, and he says, son, again, son, which he didn't address his own son, Jesus, in inverted commas. He never called him son. He speaks in the third person. He says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But to brother Swagard, he says, my son, my son, not so freely. So, I says, look, this is not the word of God. We say, playing, they said that the church groups, and they, by the meantime, while this was being discovered, they made a net profit of $15 million on this version before they could remove it, $15 million. Brother Swagat has written some beautiful books. Beautiful books. Incest. Pornography, homosexuality, alcohol, Sodom and Gomorrah. And I can't imagine myself doing any better. Beautiful writings. Incest. This is the dark stain on our society, American society. The dark stain on American society. It has reached epidemic proportions. Incest. In my country, the whites of South Africa, according to statistics, 8% of all white people, they commit incest. 8%, one in every 12, is committing incest. I don't know what's the percentage here, but Brother Swaggart tells us that it has reached epidemic proportions in your mighty country, America. And he gives examples from the Holy Bible that there are 10 cases of incest in the Holy Bible. I didn't know that. I knew that in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, there were four cases. Brother Swagat's book enlightens me. I got the fifth one in the first book. As if this is a textbook on incest to tell you what, what types of incest you can commit. In a book of God, ten cases of incest. And I'm told that the type of food you eat, you eat junky food, you become a junkie. You read junky stuff, your mind becomes junky type of things you read. Can't you see we are getting programmed? Whatever you see, whatever you read, we are getting programmed. You read about incest, 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 father with his daughters, son with his mother, father-in-law with his daughter-in-law, brother with his sister. What is this? Ten cases of incest. You read about incest, incest, incest. Little wonder that it has reached epidemic proportions. You see, Dr. Vernon Jones, and I, 
uh, an American psychologist of great repute. He carried out experiments on groups of school children to whom certain stories were being read. And he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character, even in the narrow classroom situation. The type of stories that you read, the type of stories that they read, the things that they see, that is the type of mentality they're going to have. So I said, Book of God, why would God Almighty go out of his way in his holy book to reveal to you 10 cases of incest coupling? 10 cases. So I said, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the word of God. The first five books, supposed to be the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These revisers, scholars of the highest eminence, they are telling us today that Moses didn't write the books. He didn't write the books. He's not the author. It's the author, Genesis, author, the first book of Moses in inverted commas. Exodus, second book of Moses in inverted commas. Leviticus, third book of Moses in inverted commas. Numbers, fourth book of Moses in inverted commas. Deuteronomy, fifth book of Moses in inverted commas. I'm asking why the inverted commas? What for? Why this inverted commas? They are telling you in a very, very diplomatic, psychological way that these are not our words, we don't believe so, but the common man, the laity, the preachers, the Bible thumpers, the hot gospelers, this is what they believe that these are the books of Moses, but Moses didn't write them. We don't believe that these are his words, so we put them in inverted commas. It's not the book of Moses. There are more than 700 times in these five books. You read the expression, and the Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord. Neither the Lord said this, nor did Moses write it. English, this is your language. This is written in the third person, not by God, not by Moses. If Moses wrote it, he would have said, the Lord said unto me, and I said unto the Lord. The Lord, I, or the Lord says, I said unto Moses, and Moses said unto me. This is in the third person, and that somebody else is writing about these things. It is not the word of God, it is not even the words of Moses. With regards to the obituary, I found out from Jewish scholars, that Jewish prophets didn't write the obituaries. You know, before dying, he says, you know, on my tombstone, you put these words, epitax. Jewish didn't, didn't do that. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says, my brother admits that it could be the works of Joshua, but they're supposed to be the books of Moses. How does Joshua fit in? It says, and there Moses died in the land of Moab, died in the past tense over against Beth Peer, and no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. And Moses was, he was 120 years old when he died. Of course, God can do anything. God can do anything. In an explanation about the contradictions in the Bible, whether Satan provoked David or the Lord provoked David, he said, look, this is we attributed to God. That though the devil did it, we say God did it. On that basis, would we be prepared to concede that God had those six million Jews incinerated because Hitler did it? We say because God intended it. This is what he wanted to do. So God is responsible for the massacre or the incineration of six million Jews or even 600,000 or even 6,000 is dramatic enough. If, they, if Hitler did it, could we say God did it? Are you going to blame God for that? You're going to exonerate Hitler and the Nazi party because they said God did it? No, dear brother Swagat, we don't think like that. If a criminal has done such and such a thing, we say it is his action, he's responsible. We don't say God did it. Because eventually the power comes from God, but God has given you that free will to think and, and to see right from wrong. So if you do wrong, you are responsible. You can't hold God responsible. So either David was provoked by the Satan or by the Lord. And Satan and Lord are not synonymous terms in any religion. They are opposites. Satan and the God Almighty are opposite things. Pornography.